Hi everybody, this is Rob Galvin. Um, thanks for joining today for our second installment of the DevTalk uh, webinar series. Um, Bill, if you can move to the next slide, that would be great. So uh, just a couple things before we get into the topic of today. I just wanted to remind everybody that um, if you're interested in any previous Dev Talks and actually other events that we have um, going on and participating in, we are constantly updating our uh, developer events page on uh, Launchpad. You see the URL there, uh, developer.zebra.com slash community slash developer dash events. Um, and in there, you'll, you'll only see the next upcoming dev talk um, listed there. And if you're not signed up for our dev talk notifications, you can also sign up with your email address and we'll, we'll let you know what's coming up next. Um, in addition, we've also added the previous um, events that we've done. Uh, on the right-hand side, you'll see um, a listing of the past events that we covered. Um, so if you missed last month's, uh, this was about Xamarin, and we covered both um, enterprise uh, APIs as well as printer APIs, um, and how to um, how to use those with uh, the Xamarin platform. So it was a, a great uh, presentation last month uh, that that Bill and um, uh, Dan had presented. So if you haven't uh, viewed the presentation, the recordings up there as well. Um, in addition, we're also posting events that we're intending in person. So. Uh, we have Xamarin Evolve coming up very soon, uh, so there's a few postings about what we're doing there and, and uh, who's attending and, and all the great things that are going on at that event. And you'll also see other events listed there as well on uh, local events that we may be attending. So I think there was a recent one in um, uh, Android DevCon in, in Europe that we recently attended. Uh, so we have some information there, and we'll continually post um, all of our event activities on this page, okay? So last month, we asked you what you'd like to hear um, for the next topic, and one of the things that kind of uh, rose to the top was a deeper dive on some EMDK APIs. Um, so today, we're going to be covering um, one of those APIs, or uh, one of those um, you know, sets of APIs having to do with Bluetooth, and uh, being able to use these APIs to more easily get Bluetooth capabilities in your application. Okay, so Bill's going to walk through in very technical detail all the different steps that uh, you will need. And so, if you want to, you can you can try to follow along as well. But we'll also post the uh, the contents of the presentation after uh, the session. If anybody has any questions or comments throughout the session, please type them into the GoToWebinar. Uh, question section, and we'll we'll queue those up um, at the end. So appreciate your time today, and thanks everybody, Bill. Uh, if you want yeah. to get started, that would be great. Welcome. Okay. All right, Rob. Yeah. So, so as Rob said, you know we're going to uh, take a deep dive into the scan and pair APIs, which um, you know, it offers some simple methods to be able to scan a Bluetooth barcode, you know, containing the uh, Bluetooth a remote Bluetooth device's uh, MAC address or friendly device name. Uh, and pair with pair or unpair with that device. Um, let's see here. The um, I'm going to go ahead and jump straight in. Those of you are, that are following along, um, uh, I am using uh, the latest Android Studio 2.0. Um, I'm going to kind of showcase a couple of new features along with 2.0. Uh, one of the main ones is is uh, Instant Run, which is is fantastic. Uh, it, which greatly reduces your development cycle um, of actually making changes and pushing to the device so I can focus on the code, uh, the API itself, instead of building a bunch of UI code to kind of exercise that API. I can make changes and run it really quickly. So a um, couple of things to point out. I've, what I've got for us today, uh, of course, is a, a Zebra. Um, let me make sure this doesn't look like my uh, webcam is updating. Give me just a moment. Yeah, so, all right, I'm having some issues with my webcam, but uh, as you can see from here, well, I've got a, a Zebra Bluetooth printer. Um, on the side of it, uh, closest to the, the TC55, uh, I've got a, uh, a Bluetooth uh, barcode uh, with its MAC address on it and uh, uh, a uh, mobile payment module 
uh, down the, the, the below my TC55. And so I'm going to go ahead and jump straight into uh, building an application here. For those of you following along, uh, we're just going to go ahead and create a new uh, Android Studio application. Let's just call it Dev Talks Scan and Pair. Uh, leave everything else default here. For my uh, in previous uh, tutorials and stuff with the MDK, you know we've we've uh, directed you to choose the MDK um, as your minimum SDK. Um, in newer versions of uh, Android Studio, that became uh, an issue uh, with how the project was scaffolded. So in this case, we really just need to select. Um, APIs 19 or 16 uh, uh, as your as your minimum. Here I'm just going to choose 19. Move on through the wizard. Uh, create an empty activity. Going to use the default main activity. <clears throat> Let uh, Android Studio scaffold our application. Let's see if we can get this thing to respond. All right. Good deal. So now we're waiting for Android Studio to build our scaffold out our project. I can still build in here, give them just another moment. Gradle's running. All right, we're ready to go. So now, uh, one of the other features I'm going to make use of is, uh, is a feature called uh, Live Templates uh, that allow me to build you know, chunks of code and insert them into the into the um, into any one of the the files that I'm working on um, uh, makes it real real simple. You can actually add in uh, variables that allow you to tab through those templates if you if you want to add in uh, code as you insert it. The first thing we want to do to to make use of the MDK is set up our project to make use of. It. And again, in in times past, in older versions of Android Studio, you were able to select that when you were creating a new project, or to simply go to uh, the project structure and, and modify your app's um, uh, compile version. Uh, here we're going to leave it at the default, whatever the highest one you've got, hopefully above 22. Um, there are some things that, that Google, choices that Google's made and when, when you scaffold the application that, that cause issues if you choose a compile version below, I believe, 21. Um, so we'll just leave this at default, the highest that you've got, and uh, to actually make use of the MDK, now we're uh, uh, going to modify our build Gradle file and insert some values in there that uh, that point um, the build system to our EMDK jar files. So I'm going to go ahead and push in here. Okay, provided. So this line uh, that I've added into into our build Gradle for the app module. Um, kind of explain what's going on here. Again, we're just telling it that we're wanting to include um, for for build purposes, um, our EMDK jar that's located uh, on my file system, in this case, um, buried in this libs folder. It'll be similar on your system, depending on your Windows or Mac. Um, one other thing we need to point out here is, let's see, okay. even though we're telling um, the build system where this jar is and that we want to use it during the build process, we want to tell it in, in our exclude in the file in the compile file tree that we want to make sure that it doesn't get included in the resulting APK. Because that jar, this EMDK um, library already exists on the device, um, or should. We've got a, a bunch of great tutorials online that 
walk you through the process of updating that version of uh, the library if, you, if it's old or doesn't exist on, for instance, your Jelly Bean device. Uh, but newer KitKat devices will, will have that on it already. Um, let's see, the next thing we need to do is go into our manifest, our Android manifest, and ask for permission to use the MDK. So as you can see here, we're just uh, asking for uh, permission to use the MDK. And then we also need to tell Android that when our application is running, that we want to use this library that exists in the system partition. <clears throat> so now let's see, we've got our, our build system set up, our manifest set up, and we can kind of jump straight into uh, plumbing everything that's needed uh, to make use of uh, the MDK libraries. Uh, or, I'm sorry, the scan and pair libraries. First thing I'm going to do um, is go ahead and uh, import in um, all of the uh, MDK uh, objects and fields that we're going to need. Um, this can happen on the fly. Is if you've got Android Studio set up to automatically import those and organize your imports, uh, it's a pretty nice feature. Um, but uh, I'm going to go just for uh, to save time here. I'm going to go ahead and insert in all of the uh, all of the imports we need. Should oh, okay. So we need to let uh, Gradle sync here. Let's go ahead and call sync. Gradle's going to go grab that uh, jar file and satisfy all of these uh, necessities. Usually you would do that uh, as soon as you state, start making modifications to this Gradle build file. Uh, you'll usually get that banner saying you, it's out of sync and you need to sync up. So again, uh, it's pulled in that jar file and now we can see that all our imports, imports are uh, satisfied here. Um, and the next thing I want to do is uh, pull in some, um, some globals uh, that we're going to use throughout the application. Now let me go ahead and comment this one out. We'll explain a little deeper later on what this is, what this uh, status listener is for. Um, but to kind of point out the uh, globals that we've uh, we're going to use throughout the application, of course, is our EMDK manager. Uh, if any of you are if you are uh, familiar at all with the EMDK APIs, um, this is our starting point uh, to using any of the other uh, any of the API APIs. It it deals with all the process of binding to the background. Um, EMDK library and, and providing us with uh, instances of these uh, scan and pair manager, for instance, to, to make use of the APIs that are below it. So I'm also going to, not going to spend a lot of time, like I said, on building user interfaces, buttons, and input fields and stuff. I really just want to focus on uh, the API itself. Uh, so really all I'm going to do at this point is just uh, uh, have one text view that's basically a log of what's, what's going on and a string builder to contain um, uh, all the text. I'll be inserting things at the top and you'll kind of see it scrolling on the screen. So um, I think we need to go ahead in our layout and do one thing, which is give our activity, I'm sorry, our text view an ID. Scroll down through here, find our ID, and I'm just going to call it TV1 for text view1. And we should be able to close down just about everything else here and focus on our activity. So now, uh, like I said, the MDK manager is our entry point to all the other APIs. So the first thing we need to do is, is request um, that EMDK manager object. Uh, we're going to do that in our on create. So with this code, we're going to um, <clears throat> ask our EMDK manager class uh, to give us an EMDK manager object. You can see here that we're passing in our application context and our activity context. You can also see here that um, Android Studio is not happy uh, with this just yet. Uh, we need to make some modifications to uh, our activity and, and, and uh, uh, implement a few uh, listeners for this, this uh, gripe is satisfied here, but uh, to, I'll handle that in just a moment here, but uh, one thing to point out again is that we're not 
uh, we're requesting the MDK manager object, but this is uh, uh, this this call does not return uh, the MDK manager object. It it only returns a results object, which basically explains whether uh, we've successfully requested it or not. Um, we're going to be getting this MDK manager object asynchronously, and so which is why we need to implement um, a couple of listeners to get that back. Uh, a couple other things to point out here. Again, in our results object that we get back, um, this this process may take uh, an unknown a period of time. And because we're doing this in our own create, we want to make sure that we're not blocking um, that in fear of uh, you know giving the user an application not responding message. So <clears throat> again, we're just going to quickly or, or we're going to. Uh, have a results object that's going to block for a very short period of time, return our results object, and then which will allow us to immediately inspect that result object and display to the user uh, whether we were successfully able to request it. Um, uh, one of the things that Android Studio is griping about here is that uh, it's looking for a method that doesn't exist yet. I'm going to go ahead and add that in so we can satisfy that. And so in this in this method, um, I'm basically just taking in a string uh, passed in and uh, finalizing that string and then calling this handy run on UI thread uh, method to uh, modify our values on the on the UI thread, uh, inserting a value, our text that we passed in, a line to kind of separate stuff in the log, and um, and then I'm setting our text views value uh, to the to the string value of that string builder. Um, so uh, now we've got an easy way to, to update um, our screen from asynchronous methods. Uh, in this case, I could have just done it directly, but I, I wanted to basically uh, push all the messages that are going into my log into one, one method. Um, makes it a little bit easier. And so let's go back and satisfy this, this uh, gripe here. So it's saying that um, um, we can't set, uh, we can't pass um, our activity um, uh, context here because it doesn't implement a few uh, 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 listeners. So let's jump in and go ahead and, and, and implement those listeners. Okay. All right, so if you notice here, we've added in our EMDK listener and uh, something that our scan and pair manager is going to, um, to want as well is a status listener. Um, the the calls to status listener are are synchronous, um, but the getting information back about the status of uh, or updates to uh, what process the scan and pair manager is in. For instance, if we're in the process of scanning or pairing or we're paired, all that information will come back through this status listener asynchronously, and we'll tie up a handler for that. Um, here, it, it, you'll notice that. Um, uh, Android Studio gives us a nice tool uh, pop-ups here to say, you know, it's, it's complaining that uh, we're not implementing these methods uh, that, that both of these two require. So we're going to go ahead and let Android Studio uh, insert those for us. So here I'm just going to click on Import Methods. It's going to show us uh, which methods to, it's going to import uh, on open and on closed for our, for our EMDK listener and an on status uh, for our scan and pair manager listener. I'm going to click OK. Let it stuff those values in. All right, so we have got our EMDK manager uh, object requested. And again, this is going to happen asynchronously. Once it's done all the work in the background of binding to the service, making sure everything's up and ready to go, it's going to call <coughs> this on open method, passing us our EMDK manager object. Now we can take and set our, our EMDK manager global uh, to the value passed in so that it can be used elsewhere in the application if we, if we wish. So, okay. so here all we've done again is set our global <coughs> to, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the one that was passed in and, uh, so, and then we need to go ahead and also uh, deal with what our uh, on status is going to pass back to us. So again, our on status is coming from our <coughs> scan and pair API or scan and pair listener. And again, this this status data is going to pass back information, status states that are let us know 
uh, what state our uh, the, the pairing process is in, our scanning or pairing process is in. So we'll go ahead and add in a switch case here. Another a handy thing inside um, uh, Android Studio is a is a quick key, some quick keys to uh, organize your code when uh, when you you know cut and pasted things in from elsewhere. Um, on a Mac, it's Alt Command L, and that's going to push everything else in to uh, organize it properly. Um, so for our uh, status data that gets passed in, um, it's it has a, a a method call to pull back an enum value uh, that, that tells us kind of what state we're in. Again, so for instance, we're we're waiting uh, for someone to uh, push the trigger if we had told the scan of pair APIs to use a hard scan, for instance. Um, uh, and again, all, all, all these uh, are giving us different states, and we're going to be updating our user interface, the log, to explain uh, what, uh, what's going on. And then lastly here, we've got an error message. So if any, if any of these uh, fall through and we've got an error comes through, we're going to go ahead and be able to push in our state uh, that we're, we're switching on here. Uh, into a string value, as well as another method call, which is uh, getting a result, which is really just a string that gives us a better idea of what might have gone wrong. Um, so now we've got uh, our, our own open method and our own status that will deal with our asynchronous information coming back. Uh, so now we can kind of really start digging in and making use of the, the scan and pair API. Um, First of all, let's go ahead and request uh, an EMDK manager object, or an EMDK scan and pair object. Um, let's see here, get scan and pair. Go ahead and organize my code. And uh, so what we're doing, we're doing here is, is making sure that our scan and pair object, uh, global from above, um, hasn't already been initialized. Uh, we're going to Take that scan and pair, that uh, global scan and pair object, and uh, set it to the value of our EMDK. Or ask our EMDK manager for it to to give us an instance of a feature type scan and pair. Um, this get instance, you know, of course, it uh, this is our method to gain access to multiple different APIs underneath the EMDK, and uh, by default, it returns back an, an EMDK base, which all of those EMDK APIs are built on top of. So we need to cast uh, that uh, this object returned object, the scan and pair feature type object to a scan and pair manager. Um, and again, set our global with that. Now we've got our, um, now that we've got, uh, because this is a, a blocking call, uh, it, it, we're pretty sure at this point that the scan and pair manager is initialized and not null, uh, but it's, it's always better to, to be sure and, and check to make sure it's not null before you start trying to use it. Um, so ne next, the next thing we're doing here, um, even though we've told our activity or set our activity up as the uh, listener uh, for our scan and pair manager, and we've implemented the method uh, to do so, we also need to tell the scan and pair manager what method callback um, uh, or what what is going to be handling the callbacks. So of course, uh, Android Studio is griping here that. Um, that we haven't implemented this and isn't sure what it is because I had at the beginning um, commented that out. So now that we've got everything set up, um, this allows us to go ahead and bring this up and tell it the uh, set the um, our status callback to uh, our our activity, uh, which again implements the on on uh, on status call. So now we've got everything kind of set up for. Um, of receiving that information back, let's go ahead and start making use of the APIs. Let's see, one of the first things we want to do um, is go ahead and pair to this printer. So, EMDK. And before I explain this, let me go ahead and jump over to, back over to my camera here again. So I was pointing out that we've got a uh, a Zebra uh, receipt printer here, Bluetooth enabled, and on the side of it we've got a uh, barcode with the device's MAC address and Bluetooth MAC address in it. It's kind of hard to see, it's not focusing very well. And of course we've got our um, 
we've got our uh, TC55. And a nice tool here to be able to control and see what's going on on the screen a little better so we don't have to try to see that through the camera. Um, to break into the APIs here, the, one of the first things we kind of want to do is, is, is set up, uh, so the, the Scan and Pair uh, Manager gives us a, a config object to, to manipulate how it's going to function when you, when you call its Scan and Pair uh, method. Uh, one of the first things that I like to set up here is the notification type. Um, uh, the, the different notification types that are available, of course, is just a beeper, which is we're going to play some tones on the device to tell us um, the state in which uh, in state of pairing is in, whether it was an error or whether it successfully happened. You can also shut this off by setting it to none, uh, so there are no beeps at all. Uh, the only notifications you'll get are the Android system itself telling you that, um, that it was uh, successfully paired or not. Um, in this case, we are going to be using uh, the barcode scanner. Um, let me back up a little bit. You know, so uh, someone, some of you may be asking why uh, why you would you know want to make use of this API as opposed to just using the standard um, Android um, uh, Google Android APIs for Bluetooth pairing and and our barcode manager um, uh, APIs. You know, marrying those together in your own code, which you which you can. Uh, this API basically just you know, simplifies that whole process. It's making use of our APIs in the background as well as those Google uh, Bluetooth APIs, marries them together to make it a really simple interface here for you to be able to, to configure and use in different use cases. So uh, again, uh, you'll notice here that if you've ever used our, our, our uh, barcode manager uh, APIs, our barcode APIs, there's a whole bunch of other setup in, that you have to go through. Uh, this is giving you a quick uh, interface to those things without ha really having to touch it, and it's dealing with all of your uh, Bluetooth or barcode uh, scanning uh, parameters for you. So, uh, one of the things that we're going to do here is set up uh, a a scan and pair. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a scan info, a scan timeout uh, field, which is basically saying that I want uh, to wait for this period of time before timing out um, while trying to scan. Um, also, uh, the next here is our uh, device identifier, and uh, what this is, is basically saying is, uh, is allowing us to choose which scanner we're going to use on the device. Um, so let's see here. So we've got uh, default chosen, and default is going to default to whichever is, um, of course, the default scanner for that device. So for instance, this TC55, I believe, has a an internal imager. Uh, some have an internal laser, depending on the device you have. It's going to automatically um, choose uh, that that internal scanner. Uh, you can also tell it to go ahead and use a a, a Bluetooth scanner uh, if it's attached, or your internal camera. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to stick with default. Also, um, we can set up the the trigger type for uh, for this scan. Now, uh, you really just have one or two choices. You can either uh, do a soft trigger, which is going to do that with software. It's going to kick off the scan. As soon as we call a scan and pair um, method, it's going to kick off and try to start scanning and wait for that five-second timeout before it, it, it fails. Uh, you could also um, make your end user you know, hit the scan button if you wish, uh, and then it would start the pairing process, the scan and pair process. In this case, I'm going to stick with soft. And one last thing for configuration here, not one of the, one of the last here, is uh, we're going to tell it uh, that we always want it to scan in this case. Um, the, you know, we're, we want to make sure and do this because you can, you can also pass in, you know, uh, just be able to configure it to, uh, if you already have the MAC address for the device you're wanting to pair with, um, or its or its friendly name, its Bluetooth name, you could just set a couple of variables here and, and completely skip the the barcode scanning process. Um, and by default, um, I believe this is set to true, uh, but we're going to go ahead and set it to true. Um, and uh, later on, I'll show how to use the APIs if you already know that information. Or for instance, you want to allow your user to enter in that friendly name into a field pass it off to these APIs and have it pair uh, without having to do any Bluetooth scanning, or I'm sorry, any scanning at all. So the last thing I'm doing here before I, I go and actually do my, my, my scan 
is setting it up to to know what type of data uh, this uh, pairing barcode is, uh, whether it's actually the friendly name of the device or whether it's a MAC address. So I'm scan setting the scan data type uh, to to MAC address now. Um, you can leave this to, I believe the, the choices are MAC address, name, and unspecified. Now, unspecified um, is going to take a little longer because it'll, um, you can set it here. If you don't really know if you've got a, a whole bunch of devices and you've got a mix of whether it's a MAC address or a device name, um, if you set it to unspecified, it's going to, to scan the barcode and try to figure out whether it is a MAC address or not, whether it has the correct number of characters, um, and it's in um, in the in the correct format. If it is, it's going to try to pair uh, as if it was a MAC address. Otherwise, it's going to assume it's a name and go through the discovery process to find that device out there, find its MAC address, and then move on uh, with the pairing process. So um, it, it's it's a lot quicker if you know uh, what type of barcode you're going to be scanning. Um, but we'll leave it in this case. We're going to leave it as MAC address. That. And lastly here, we've got some code to um, uh, call the scan and pair managers uh, scan and pair method. And um, older, old, older security um, methods in Bluetooth allowed you to uh, pass in just your pin um, to, uh, to pair with the device. Um, recent versions of the, of the uh, of, uh, Bluetooth security standards uh, basically force uh, both devices to present um, a, a pairing pin and both agree uh, basically what's going on. Uh, so in this case, um, this is really just a dummy value. It is required. Um, you can't just pass in a null value. Um, the string, and so and I'm just passing in a dummy string with four pin characters, uh, or four, four pin count value. And uh, it'll basically throw this away um, when it goes through the pairing process. Uh, much like the um, the results object above with the MDK manager, um, this is going to uh, make the call, and asynchronously again we're going to be getting uh, values back, uh, whether uh, about the pairing process and what state we need to be in, and, and give us some information about what we need to do. Uh, but this results code is going to immediately pass back and tell us whether we successfully uh, attempted to do this process. So again, we're just inspecting uh, its results object and updating the UI if there were some errors for some reason. So again, we're not we're looking for it not to be success. And if it isn't a success, uh, we can update the screen to tell the user that something went wrong. So let's see, we've got everything kind of wired up here. I'm going to try, uh, so this first time here, I'm going to go ahead and build the application and push it to our device, uh, of course. Let's see here, why is that unhappy? Let me go ahead and kill. And detach our device. Reconnect here. Let's see if we can get, make it happy, there it is. <coughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and push this to our device. And if we are lucky, let's fire Pfizer back up. Wait for Android Studio to build our app. <clears throat> And so as I was talking about earlier, um, new feature in Android Studio 2.0 is, is called uh, 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 Live Run, I guess that's what I called it. Uh, no, Instant Run, yes. <clears throat> so Instant Run, this first process, this first time building the uh, application, it's going to take a little bit as usual. But those of you that are uh, have, have gone through this process before, you know that uh, you, you build an application, you push it down to the device, you make a simple mistake. Um, uh, say you name something incorrectly or, or use some value incorrectly, uh, you would go back through this process every time of rebuilding the application after making maybe just a one-line change. Uh, Instant Run is going to allow us to push this application down, and while it's still attached, um, if we make any simple modification, just by hitting the play button again, it's going to push down, look at the bytecode differences, and push just those changes 
uh, down to the device. So looks like I've got an error. We need to dig in here and figure out what's wrong. So we got a null pointer. Hmm, what did I miss? What did I miss? Oh, I know what I missed. It was trying to set our text view, and I forgot to bring our text view to life. So let's see, TV1 equals a text view. Line view by D. D. <coughs> R. TV one. There it is. Okay. That should make it happy. Let's see. So again, uh, this probably live uh, instant run is probably not going to work because it crashed. But let's see. Yeah, it's going to have to rebuild it real quick. Yeah, I was just going to say, Bill, you probably did that on purpose so you can demonstrate the instant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's a good demo without a, an exception, right? Yeah, without problems. Uh, what do they call it? The demo gods are. Uh, <laughs> Not yeah. exactly shining on me just yet, but uh, okay. So now let's see. Uh, probably gonna this is probably gonna time out because I, I took a little too long. Yeah. So, um, so basically, what I did was it, it went ahead and pushed the application down, um, and we uh, got our our MDK manager object uh, turned on the beam so that it could start scanning because we told it to soft scan, and it timed out because I didn't do all this in five seconds. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go back, and one of the beauties of again of, uh, of instant run here is I'm just going to you know make a simple change. If I hit run right now, it's going to say that there's really no changes. I don't have anything to push to the device. I'm just going to fake it out real quick and hit a space in there and push it again. And so it and it, it should uh, build the application. You can see that it flashed there. Our, our beam is on. It just scanned. It's scattering the Bluetooth the device. Oh, I know what else I did. I might want to turn the printer on for one thing. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. Let our print, printer initialize here and get ready for pairing. All right, it looks like it's ready. I'm going to go ahead and do that again. I'm going to remove that space that I had in there. I'm going to push the instant run. It's going to tell us, that, oh, now what happened? What is it unhappy about? Fatal signal bus. Let's see. I've seen the uh, visor uh, tool get in the way sometimes. So that is <laughs> it is beta. I think I think that somehow gets in the way. Uh, with it's a, it's a great tool until it's not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so it aired out here. So let's try this again. Uh, again, I'm going to add in something, change, and hopefully it scanned our barcode. And so this should actually, yeah, so our device, if we look at our printer, it printed out um, a pin, a pairing pin. Uh, I've seen this also, it kind of depends sometimes, but I've also seen it uh, go ahead and just present this pin on the screen. Uh, I'm not really sure of the sequence of events that allow us to do that, but here I'm just going to punch in what I see on the on the printer and go ahead and let it try to pair. And that is an error. So let's try this again. We go and see if I can try. Said it was an error. Let's look at our yeah, for sure. It did not uh, did not pair with it. So let me go back and try again. And let's kick this off one more time here. And let's see. Am I missing anything? Don't see anything wrong here. Kick our instant run off again. No changes to deploy. A lot of changes, scan the barcode, kicked out a new one, yeah, so that's what I was looking for. So yeah, I'm going to pair, 
And we successfully paired. Again, uh, to go back to that, because it happened kind of quickly. Um, hangouts to go away there. Um, uh, it, it, it scanned that barcode, uh, started the pairing process. Our printer uh, kicked out another uh, pairing pin, and our device kicked a uh, dialog into the foreground saying that this is the pin that the uh, remote device is uh, willing to pair with. Do you agree? And I hit yes. So now we've got uh, this device paired with that printer just by scanning it, and of course some a little bit of user interaction to um, verify the pin because of Bluetooth security. Um, uh, to my knowledge, there's not a way uh, to uh, to get past that. Um, it's required, and uh, will also be required when we uh, pair with our our payment module here in just a moment. Uh, so we've got our device paired, and say you know, kind of thinking about a use case for this. Say we've got um, users in the field, a um, uh, store associate that you know picks up a printer out of a bank of printers uh, at the start of their shift along with the device. We want to be able to pick those two things up, pair them together, and then again at the end of their shift, maybe they want to unpair them before putting them back on the shelf. Uh, so in our app we could, um, I'm going to just uncomment this line here. Um, again, we called our scan and pair. Uh, uh, the opposite of that, of course, is scan and unpair. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call this, kick off our instant run again, and we should be able to scan the barcode, which it did, and you can see that it automatically unpaired for us. If we look in our uh, Bluetooth settings, um, you'll see the device is unpaired. Uh, so again, we've got um, uh, all, all the uh, necessities to, to scan a barcode, uh, pair that with, with very minimal uh, user input. Um, uh, it's one of the last things I want to show off here in the APIs is say you've got a device you don't it's not it's MAC address for instance not is not printed on the device anywhere what I have um, is a mobile payment module um, this device is is uh, just an engineering sample uh, the the shippable products actually have um, our uh, Bluetooth Mac in, in a uh, barcode here on the back uh, in this case I only have uh, the device's um, name, for instance. So if, if that is the case, um, and you know what the name of your device is going to be, uh, you can use that in the APIs to, to, to go ahead and pair. I'm going to skip through a couple of menus here and get this thing ready to pair with. All right. I don't think you can really kind of make out what's on this screen, but it's basically telling me what its Bluetooth name is and telling me that it's not connected. Um, so now I can go into my code and go ahead and get rid of all of this. Use the device name. Clean up my code formatting here. Pull this back full screen. So let's go back through the through the code here real quick. Again, um, we've already set up our listener. Um, we've told that we want to use the beeper. <clears throat> We've also told it that always scan is false now. We want to tell it that we're not going to use the scanner at all at this point. We're just going to provide a device name. And again, this could have been passed in from some edit text field on your in your activity uh, from the user. Or if you knew uh, what these what what the name was of this uh, remote device, you could pass it in. Um, we're telling it. I don't think this is necessary. Uh, I believe I can comment this out because it's. Uh, we're not really setting up any scan info uh, to tell it which type of device. So I'm going to go ahead and comment that out. Um, same process here. We're going to get a result code back. We could, you know, uh, uh, explain whether we had an issue or not. Let me get rid of that too. And I'm going to go ahead and call this. So now we're going to. We, what should happen um, is our device should automatically try to pair. Instant run. Discovering the device. And there's our pin. So on our module, let me get back up here. There we go. So now it's wanting us to enter in this pin. So if I do it quickly enough, four six four two two two, enter. And we're pairing, and 
device successfully paired. All right, so we've got our now our payment module and our TC55 paired, so we'd be able to do payment transactions on it in our mobile uh, payment application. Um, and again, just the opposite. Uh, we can go back into our code, and when we are done with it, if we wish, we could tell it to unpair. Uh, again, I'm going to kick off our instant run. We should immediately see the changes take effect. It applied and automatically unpaired uh, for our device. And in a nutshell, uh, that is the uh, scan and pair APIs. Um, open for any questions. Uh, Rob, has anything rolled in yet? Yeah, um, yeah, Bill. A couple couple questions for you. That was that was really great. I mean, really, only a few lines of code, and you have all yeah. that functionality, right? Yeah, especially so. if, especially if you if you're familiar with the MDK. Um, there is some some overhead here and some setup that's necessary, right? Um, but once you once you set this up, you know you can make use of all of the other EMDK APIs uh, reusing this code here. Uh, so yeah, very very little really when it comes down to making use of the scan and pair APIs. Right. And then you demo you, you know you demonstrate it using uh, Zebra or symbol devices, but this applies to any really any Bluetooth device, right? Right. You could pair two Android devices together, for instance. Um, of course, they would have to be Zebra Android devices for uh, this code to work. Uh, but um, you could uh, if you're pairing two Android devices together. No, I take that back. One of them would have to be right, uh, the one that's running this code. But you could pair to a Samsung device if you wish to. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. So a couple other questions uh, came in. So can you use this API for pairing the ring scanner? Eh, well, no. The I believe you're talking about the RS-507. Um, and in this case, that's not what these APIs are, are designed for. Um, the the ring scanner uh, is unique in its, uh, that it is actually the master in this pairing process where, I'll switch back to our, if, uh, you know, in this case, we because we're initiating the Bluetooth pairing process from the TC55, it is the master in this pairing process, this being the slave. Um, in When it comes to the RS-507, it's the opposite. The RS-507 is what's initiating that pairing process, alerting the TC55 that it has, um, that it wants to pair. So with the TC55, of course, you would present, or you would present a barcode, the TC55's MAC address to the RS-507, it would scan that and initiate the pairing process. Um, these these APIs do not handle that in any way. Okay, I mean, that, that kind of makes sense. It's, it's going the opposite direction, so. Right. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, let's see, a couple of questions. Is there a code sample for RAD Studio? I think you meant Android Studio. Uh, so, yeah. The RAD Studio we're, we're be... is uh, Delphi, I believe. Okay. Um, and no, I don't think we have any. Um, in, in times past, I've seen uh, code samples from both um, uh, represented in Java, represented in RAD Studio, and uh, yeah, the, the functions are similar, but I, I don't think that we had any code examples of how to use uh, the MDK in Delphi. Uh, no, I don't, I don't have any. Okay. Like well, we will post the code sample that we have with the recording. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So another question: Are these APIs available in the EMDK for Xamarin? Not yet. Um, as of now, and and even the next release 2.0, which is coming up soon, um, we didn't. Ex we have not yet. Uh, we don't have parity between the two yet. Um, we've only uh, our profile manager APIs and our barcode scanning APIs are exposed in, in Xamarin. Okay. Hoping to gain parity on the next release. Um, can't promise anything at this point though. All right. Can we use this scan and pair sample to pair RFD 8500? RFD, that is the uh, RFID tool. Um, I'm not sure. I can't answer that. I can find out, um, but I, I would imagine you probably could, um, uh, as long as it again is not in the same um, uh, does not expose the same function as the RS-507. If it is, 
the master in that pairing process, you're probably going to get um, uh, some of the same you know function. Now, I did say that the RS it couldn't this could not be used for the RS five hundred seven. In in some cases, there are some kind of hacky ways to make it function, but uh, again, I'm not going to uh, you know say we support that. I think that there once it's paired with the RS five hundred seven. Uh, you could go through that process, and, and with a sequence of buttons, you could make it function. But again, uh, I, I don't think it's a supported way, uh, and, and at this point, uh, we don't support that. But uh, that RFID reader, um, uh, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Uh, I would think it would, but I would actually have to try it myself and gain some of that hardware and try. All right. Okay. Um, going back to your code, could you show your code again on the... Yep. Um, not that one where you actually the the previous the first example where you were doing the scan and pair. You mentioned that some of these settings or configuration were your setting, but the default value that you could essentially use as well. So this um, is, can you point out what is minimally required? I guess here. Um, yeah, I think what I is think absolutely that, minimum? Yeah, I think that um, to be completely honest with you, I'd have to dig in the APIs to figure out what the uh, what the defaults are, but I'm pretty sure there is a default um, timeout, which may or may not suit you. And I believe that um, it defaults to because these are, you know, namely scan and pair APIs. That it would make sense that you know this would be set to true uh, by default. But I'll have to dig in the APIs to find that out for sure. Um, okay. I would say, so like, of that, do you wanna? You know, you want to point out where the documentation is for these sure. APIs? Yeah. Let me pull this up here real quick and maximize my so tech docs. Open this up a little bit more. <clears throat> right, so if you go to techdocs.zebra.com or you can get to this through Launchpad uh, by going to Launchpad and uh, going to the Android section and, and choosing uh, uh, EMDK for Android or EMDK for Xamarin, you'll initially get driven to this page. Uh, this is kind of a high-level overview of all the different uh, tools that we have documentation for in this documentation system. Um, so for EMDK for Android, for instance, if we were wanting to dig in and figure out what those defaults were, uh, we could go to uh, our uh, APIs link right here and scroll through our APIs. Let's look for the S's. Where are we at? Where are we at? Scan and pair. And so what was our, what was our question? Our question was, let's see, if config always scan was necessary, maybe. Which one would that be in? Pair states, no, it would be scan and pair. Scan info, right? Scan config, scan info, probably. Scan info. Scan Always scan. Nope. Which one? You have any idea which one that's in, Rob? Remember which one of them. But anyway, uh, this is where you would kind of, you would dig into the API uh, listings and kind of dig through and figure out which um, values would be default or not. Um, I also think um, that this one may also be unnecessary because it's probably going to automatically de default to this value. So maybe, again, you would just need to trigger whether you want a, a soft scan or a hard scan. Um, and if you know the MAC address, so you could probably set this to undefined um, as well, and it would go through the longer process of figuring that out, what it just tried to scan. Um, but uh, still pretty minimal uh, in, in you know, uh, the configuration necessities. All right. Great. Um, let's see. What else? Any other questions from anybody? Um, what happened to my question? There we go. Uh, can we use this? Oh, we already got that one. Okay. All right. I think we have all the, the questions answered. Um, I'm not sure Did if there's anything else. Questionnaires you wanted to throw up, Rob, or you know if we had any polls? No, this so we... Yeah, so uh, when you guys ex exit the uh, session, you'll just be presented with a, a standard uh, webinar survey. If you guys can fill that out, that would be great. Um, we always look for suggestions for upcoming topics. We plan on doing these at least once a month. We may do it more. You may see 
um, other sessions pop up. We will always notify you via the DevTalk uh, notification system, and uh, we'll look to do another one uh, in May, and we'll look for your feedback in order to determine what the topic is. Um, so if you can kindly do that, that would be great. And uh, I want to just, since, uh, since Dan or Robin may still be on the call, is there anything you want to mention from a printer point of view that that may have come up in this demo, or I know I'm putting you on the spot if you're still on, Dan. No, oh, I think I think Bill did an excellent job highlighting everything. Um, the only thing I would add is that you know we'll be posting the recording and the presentation for this, so check back on Launchpad to be able to find that. But you know, Bill, you did an excellent job. The Thanks. demo gods were very kind to you. <laughs> uh, only a couple little issues, but you were able to work through them. So yeah. nicely done. Thanks. Deal. All right. All right. So, uh, Bill, thanks a lot. Great job. Uh, thanks, everybody, for your time today and, and sticking through the, uh, the webinar, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.